Hi, everybody. This is Rob Swatsky from the York Campus of Hack. And in this podcast, we'll be reviewing venous return. All of the blood traveling through the systemic veins as it makes its way back to the heart is called venous return. It is propelled through the veins due to the pressure generated by the contraction of the left ventricle. The blood pressure, once blood leaves the capillaries and enters the venules, is around 16 millimeters of mercury, which is usually enough to get blood back into the heart. Because veins are under much lower pressure than the arteries, there are more challenges in returning venous blood to the heart. Venous return is easier when you're lying down because gravity is not a factor. The challenges of venous return are most pronounced when returning blood to the heart as you stand up from a seated position, where blood now has to also overcome the force of gravity that wants to move the blood back down to your legs. In addition to the heart's pumping action, there are two other venous pumps that help with venous return from the lower body. The skeletal muscle pump of the legs and the respiratory pump. Both of these pumps utilize the vein's valves. The skeletal muscle pump works through an alternating compression and decompression of veins in the lower legs. Let's take a look at this first diagram. When you're standing, the valves in the veins of the lower legs are open. This includes both the proximal valves that are nearest to the heart and the distal valves that are further away from the heart. Blood is able to freely move up through the veins, through these open valves, to the heart. Let's take a look at the second diagram. When you walk, your leg muscles contract and squeeze the veins through compression. This pushes blood up through the proximal valve, a process called milking. As the proximal valve opens, the distal valve closes due to the back pressure of some of the blood being pushed against it. And now let's take a look at the third diagram. After the leg muscles relax, the pressure decreases in the segment of the vein that was compressed, which closes the proximal valve. Blood pressure in the foot is now higher than the blood pressure in the leg, so the distal valve now opens and blood flows into the vein from the foot. Following this, the proximal valve then reopens. If you're standing for long periods of time, you can put your skeletal muscle pump into action by flexing your gastrocnemius, or calf muscles. Doing this will prevent fainting, also called syncope, which is a sudden temporary loss of consciousness as the result of a decrease in venous return to the heart. A lower venous return will decrease the supply of blood that reaches the brain, which means that there is less oxygen and glucose delivered to the brain, which will result in cerebral ischemia, which is a lack of enough blood flow to the brain, and then fainting. The respiratory pump works in a similar fashion as the skeletal muscle pump. Through venous compression and decompression, that creates a pressure gradient. When we inhale, the diaphragm muscle, shown here as this dome-like muscle, moves in a downward direction. This increases the volume of the thoracic cavity resulting in a decrease in its pressure. The pressure in the abdominal cavity below the diaphragm, however, increases. This higher abdominal pressure compresses the abdominal veins, pushing blood into the decompressed thoracic veins, including the inferior vena cava, and then into the right atrium of the heart. When we exhale, the pressures are now opposite, with increasing pressure and decreasing volume in the thoracic cavity and decreasing pressure in the abdominal cavity. 
This pressure change closes the valves, which prevents blood from flowing backward into the abdominal veins from the thoracic veins. The deeper we inhale and exhale, the more we help the respiratory pump in bringing venous blood back to the heart.